Hello there, fellow humans, and after being awake for over 30 hours watching Le Mans... The only alternative to cake at, what is this, 2.30 in the morning in Hello, Virginia. Yeah. I decided to do the most reasonable thing one can do at 2am, that is to make a World of Tanks Blitz tier list of tier 10s. Now, here's the really big problem with these tier lists, just starting off with that. You can make a win rate based tier list, you could make a opinion based tier list, you could just chuck everything into S tier and call it a day. Uh, you could make a tier list that's based on a good player, because for example if I would base this on my skill level then Leopard would be S tier, but if I would base it on the uh, skill level, the experience of a 40% player, the Leopard would probably be D tier. So it is pretty difficult to find a tier list that makes sense for everybody. And that makes sense completely. So I'm going to try to find the balance between my opinion and the vehicle's performance and also how easy the vehicle is to use by the average player of the game. Because if I just put this up here and be like, oh, look at me, uh, super unicum gameplay, everything is S tier, that's not going to help anybody. So we're going to go through this. I'm going to have a look. Now, I'm going to start off with, with the most important thing here. Shared Missile goes E tier. That is the only vehicle that goes into E tier. Missiles can go to hell. But that's the opinion part. Now, let's start off with the 114 SP, and that already brings us to a different problem. Is a premium tank different rated to a tech tree? Because for a premium or collector, you have to pay for. So if a premium has the same performance as a tech tree vehicle, that kind of doesn't make them worth spending money on. So naturally, the premium tank would have to be downrated. But for the sake of the argument, I'm simply going to, just going to ignore that for now and put the 114 SP in C tier, kind of where it belongs. It's not really average. Uh, B tier is average, A tier is good, S tier is too good, and D tier is, well, uh, the 183. So, I put the 114 in here. I'm going to put the 121B in that same tier as well. It is inferior to the 121. Another very important thing to consider about tier list is that the vehicles don't exist in isolations, like for example the CS63, which is going into D tier. These vehicles don't exist on their own, they're always going to be compared to all the other vehicles that exist in the game. Therefore, if a vehicle is worse at everything, then obviously it has to be at the bottom. It, it, like You can't put this up here, uh, when it's just worse than every other medium in, in the game, basically. The 60TP... It is a very good beginner vehicle, and uh, I would definitely put it into the average, maybe, maybe uh, above average tier here. Um, it depends. Like, I'm gonna, gonna put it up in A because it is somewhat new player friendly. Now, the tech tree, and as well, another important aspect to consider the tech tree of the vehicle. Um, 6 TP itself, it's pretty player friendly. It does blow up quite a bit, but I would personally just, just put it up here in, into A tier um, and, and be fine with that. Now, the MX30B, it used to be down here, obviously, but Wargaming has buffed it, so now I'm just going to put it into the average tier right here, kind of where it belongs, because it's a good combination of a lot of different factors of medium tank, but it doesn't really stand out in, in one other thing that well. Then we have the MX-50B. The vehicle used to be really good, but the four-shot autoloader, the terrible accuracy, kind of didn't, didn't really do it too well, but I'm going to still put it in the average tier here. I'm, I could put it down into C tier, um, but it's just about fine enough. And that's what average, that's what the B tier is about. That is an average vehicle. It's not great, it's not terrible, it's just there. And then we have the MXM4, which I would definitely put into the same category as well. I mean, it, it isn't amazing, it's not all that cool, but it's very much there. Could be worth a look at if it's cheap in the shop. But not really. Now we get to the first big problem again, the Bat Chat. Right? This vehicle kind of belongs up here if you go by a good player. But the vehicle is going to have some problems with player friendliness. The average player is going to struggle with the vehicle quite a lot. So I'm going to put it down a tier into A. Probably fine there. Now the BZ75. I will put it into the average tier. Very simple. It's an average vehicle. Got average armor. It has it, it does have the 800 average damage gun, the derp gun, so it would sort of fit in the middle here, but I can't put it in the middle, so I'm gonna put it in here. Um but obviously if you're a good player, you can get more out of that vehicle um than for example out of an IS7. But it's average overall. Then the Karo 
Well, here's the thing. It's a Progetto that you have to pay for that's slower with a shell that you can't use while not having more armor. So, the Karo definitely... It doesn't quite go into the terrible tier of the CS63, but it definitely does go into the uh, below average tier, in my opinion. It is a vehicle that is in the shop that you have to pay for um, when you get simply just the worst performing Progetto. Not really that great. Now, the Chieftain, my heart says S tier. Realistically, I'm going to have to put it into A tier, maybe even B tier, but it is probably going to be an A tier vehicle right there. But if I would go purely off opinion, it would definitely be up here. Then, cause it won't be, well, that goes straight to the top. You've got better armor than the Chieftain, which means it's easier to play. So you have the advantage there. It does have less alpha damage. It does have better premium rounds. Um, so I think the Concept 1B is going to be the first S-tier vehicle right here. Then we have the E-100. Very new player-friendly, very solid tank. Not the greatest, but because of its new player-friendliness, it's going to go up in A, would be B, but it has extra value there. It is going to go all the way up into A. Then we have the E-50M. I would love to put it here, but uh, Wargaming kind of nerfed a little bit. So, A, it goes. Still very great all-round medium tank. Can highly recommend it to start off with as your first medium at tier 10. Problem with the E50M, however, is that the tech tree is quite terrible, especially the Panther 2, but that can be grinded in, like, mad games, so it makes up for that. Then we get into a little bit of a problem because I myself... I'm not very much of a tank destroyer player. I personally don't care about tank destroyers because I like to play a certain way in the game and I play tank destroyers the same way and they don't quite work for the playstyle I want to have. So I will essentially have to force myself to play a way I don't like to. And playing a game is about having fun. That's the most important thing, to have fun. And I'm not having fun with tank destroyers. But the Fosh... I don't really know. Like, it could go into B, it could go into A. Uh, it does have the two short holes loader. Kind of overcomplicates the thing a little bit. So it will be going into B tier, the 183. I don't think I have to explain anything. Straight up D tier. Uh, the 2 and 5 B, it is quite difficult to play. Just have a really perfect gun. Well, I mean, had nerfed it at some point for whatever reason. It is a vehicle that is very difficult to play. And even though it is a great tank... I would not see it anywhere above this because it is quite difficult to play. So it's going to fit in right there. You can get a lot out of it. But for the average player, not really that amazing of a pick. But it works out just fine. And then with the Badger, we have another problem. Because am I raiding all of these vehicles? Tankstra versus Tankstra, medium versus medium. Or am I putting them all into one category? Because in terms of a Tankstra... Badger is probably the only S tier tank destroyer at tier 10 at the moment, in my opinion. Uh, but it's a tank destroyer, so the limited viability of it would have to put it down a peg. But I'm going to keep it up there in S tier just because it's the Badger. And it's one of the very few tier 10 tank destroyers that's actually worth buying at all. 4005, it has its moments, but it's a massive barn with no armor whatsoever. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it does not work at all. It's a very, very weird vehicle. with a lot of highs and lows. And therefore, it's going to be average. And the 4202. Well, kind of the problem with the vehicle. It has the Hesh gun, which would put it up here. Like, if you can use the Hesh gun well, it's definitely an AT vehicle. Definitely belongs up here. Problem with that is, it's a Hesh gun. So that is not really great for player friendliness. We're just going to knock it down a tier gonna put it into average tier there the hurry i think the last time i played this vehicle is about a year ago so i'm not going to be able to fully accurately rate this vehicle entirely um but i'm gonna put it into average maybe even a tier it has a very good penetration it works as a back range sniper vehicle quite well um so it's somewhere between a and b tier i'm just gonna put it into b uh just to be sure there and uh, if you're offended by that, and if you want me to put the whole re into S tier, well, then put a comment down in the description telling me how I am completely wrong, because quite honestly, I might be. So, there's that. Well, yeah, the eyes fall got killed. So, it, it, yeah, it's just, unfortunately, it's going down there. It's, it's dead now. So, the i7, it's about the definition of an average vehicle. 
Still is. It always has been. It still is. So it goes right in there. And the Jagdpanzer Street 100 is sort of the opposite of the FE4005. Well, the 4005 has no armor whatsoever. It has a massive club. This vehicle is slow. It's got a single shotgun with massive alpha damage and a lot of armor. But it is still quite spotty in its performance. Which means sometimes it's going to re work really great. Sometimes it's going to get completely ruined. Which is not really that great. So, average it is. The Kranwagen. Well, the thing is, the Weltanks PC Kranwagen would have to go above S tier. But this is the Blitz Kranwagen, which is an auto reloader. And in a hull down playstyle, it is going to be a A tier vehicle. But, it's definitely better than the MX 50B at that. So, it has its point up there. And what kind of knocks it down, and what is it basically a a minus for me would be that the vehicle is not very player friendly. It's, yeah, has an auto reloader, quite slow, very low DPM. That's not really speaking for it, but it is one of the best hull down tanks in the game. So there's that. Now Leopard One. Well, I mean, it, ha it would have to go up here. If, I think the MX-30B would also have to go up here if we're just going by purely how much performance can you actually extract from it, right? Then it would have to be up here. But that's not what we're looking at here. Like, I try to make a balanced list here that also includes the needs, the wants of the average below average player, right? Because while a very good player can average 3,500 damage in Leopard, an average player is not going to get the performance out of the vehicle. However, I would put it above the MX-30B, and that's simply because of personal bias. So, eight here, it goes. The M48 Patton and the M60, there is no difference between those two vehicles. That is truly noticeable, so they're obviously going to end up both in the same tier. Um, but that is going to be the average tier. Why? They're not great. They're not terrible. They're just there. And that is perfectly fine. Now the mouse, in my personal opinion, a terrible vehicle. But it is a tank that does really well. It is easy to play. For example, if you look at the winner of the vehicle, it has very high winner. So it is very easy to use as a new player. So while it would normally be here, I unfortunately, because of how easy it is to use, I unfortunately have to put it up here. And I do not like that choice at all. Now the Minotauro... Well, it just goes in there. It's not great, not terrible. It's fine. The Object 140, well, you meet your friend down there, CS63. And um, you could put it into C tier. Could consider... I mean, it is slightly better than the CS63, but it is not the best. And it used to be the most dominant medium tank. It used to be the most dominant tank in the game. It is my most played tank in the game. But over the years, that vehicle has fallen down the ranks quite significantly, especially if we compare it to what the 62A is up to now and how the 62A can perform as well. And the 263, the Yolo Wagon, it's in a similar boat. It's just completely pointless. Like, it's not even good at the one thing it's supposed to be good at, and that's yellowing. If you sit in the back with it, it's not really a great sniper. Uh, it's not a good frontline vehicle. The gun depression is severely limited. The uh, superstructure at the front makes essentially creates a problem where you have to peek with your ass first, which is not really that great. So, not really a great vehicle. It can work in certain situations, but overall, not a recommended vehicle whatsoever. The Object 268, it's, it's the average baby of tank destroyers, basically. And uh, if, if the Fosh is here, then the Object's gonna go here. It could theoretically go up at the 8th here. It's a very easy tank to get into. So, somewhat of a straightforward line as well with the ISU, with the Object. Um... So it's somewhere in the, in the middle between these two. Uh, but I'm, again, going to put it into the... It's there. It's average. It's a vehicle that you can get, but it is not amazing. It's fairly balanced, right? This is a good balance. Like, Blitz is very well balanced. You have a lot of vehicles that are in the middle of the performance spectrum. You have very few at the top, very few at the bottom. It is quite a well-balanced game for what it is. And for the amount of vehicles that are in the game... Wargaming is doing a pretty solid job, especially when you also look at games like World Tanks PC, where the balance is awful. Then the 777, well, you have to pay for a 113. Problem is, 113 is still pretty damn good, but... Nah, you gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for that. Now, the 907 is the premium version of the Object 40. 
basically. It does the same things very similarly. You have to pay for it. So it's going to go down there. Not really cool. Not a fan of it. But there it belongs. 268 version 4 is quite an overrated vehicle, in my opinion. It's one of three tier 10 collector tank destroyers. Um, obviously, the badge is already up there. Because the Badger is often also sold very cheap, and it does what it does really well. The object is sort of like the improved Yolo Wagon, because it can do the job a little bit better. The side plates on the turret aren't really that great. The mobility isn't really that outstanding. So again, nothing special. Average vehicle right there. It is usable. It's not perfect. But hey, there it is. Progetto. Well, I mean, the car was here, and you know what I said. So... There it is. I would not put the Brigetto in the same tier as the Batchat at the moment. So therefore, Brigetto is going to go once again in the average tier. And that's also where the Sheridan goes. Because, yeah, like it's it's present currently. It doesn't have missiles like this abomination. But the Sheridan is very much in the game. It is a fun vehicle. So in terms of the fun level, you would have to bump it up a tier. Um, but overall, t in terms of playability, it's a light tank. It's going to be hard to play. It's going to go into this B tier. And the only reason why the Batcha and the Leopard up here, um, even though they're very hard to play, is because we're just a lot better. And now, well, you know where this one's going. You know where this one's going. It's got the gun depression, it's got the turret armor, it's got the DPM, it's got the gun. Fortunately, it has premium AP. Not really that great. But, it does have the perfect package currently in terms of tier 10 medium tank. So it goes all the way to the top, the STB1. Then there's the STRVK, Here's, here's, here's the dilemma with this vehicle, right? Like, it sort of works. But it also doesn't. Like, the front plate is a... It's a Kranwagen. But with a Centurion turret plunked onto it. Very high DPM. But... Could put it up here. But I'm just gonna put it down here. Below the Kranwagen. It's like a... It's the same hull, basically. They just plunked a Centurion turret on it. And a Centurion gun. 3D alpha damage. Here's the problem. The Concept 1B is up here, right? Like, the Concept 1B at hull down is a lot better vehicle. Um, but I'm just, I'm just going to leave it an A. I'm going to leave it an A so I don't get any, any shit in the comments. So nobody's going to cry and come at me, right? Uh, Super Conqueror. It's also going to go... It is... It is going to go up there, right? It is very easy to play in terms of a premium uh, collector vehicle. Premium and collector to me... I use that interchangeably, so don't mind it, um, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, well, it's in the Chiefs, and they're very different roles, very different uh, ways they get the performance. Like, the Super Conqueror is the worst vehicle on paper, but it is easier to play, easier to extract performance out of. Chieftain can do more, but it's harder to do more with it. So I'm going to put them both in the same tier. Uh, team morality, well, it, it just goes down there. What's the point of it? What is the point of it? Now, the next two vehicles, well, they're clearly... Uh, I'm going to put the 628 right next to the E50M. Might even go up to S tier, just barely. Um, just it, It's right there in the middle, right? It could be an S tier vehicle. The alpha damage is quite low. Not really that great. But I'm going to put it in the A tier. Because it's a little bit harder to play than the STB. Less gun depression, less alpha damage, a little bit lower. Obviously, front armor on the 628 is amazing. And the T22 medium, it's sort of the premium version of the T22 at this point. Like, we have the 907 being the premium version of the 140. The T22 is the premium version of the 628. It is slightly worse. It is, again, a minus tier, but it isn't bad enough to be put in to B tier. However, the gun depression could put it on the same level as something like an M60 or an FE4202. So I'm going to just leave it there and uh, pretend it's in here. Anyway, then we have the E3, a vehicle that I, again, like the Hori, haven't played in a very long time. But very good armor, very high alpha damage. It is one of the better tank destroyers. If the Badger's up here, then, uh, well, the E3 it definitely has to go up into the E tier. It is one of the better vehicles. The problem is the texture of this thing is absolutely awful. And even though it's sort of easier to play uh, than your average vehicle, the texture of it is going to be absolutely awful. But here it is. Why is the Hori lower than the E3, you might ask yourself? Well, because the Hori is a lot easier to pen, a lot di more difficult to play. That's why. Then we have the E4. It's... Yeah. I mean, it's it works. 
but it sometimes doesn't. Like, it's not really a real tank destroyer. It has a traversable turret. It sort of plays like the American E100 in a way. Um, but personally, I would just put it into the average tier right down here. It's kind of where it belongs. Then, well, the E5, and now my list is kind of getting a bit too... Yeah, hold on. Yeah, it's going back to the top. It, you, not, it didn't used to be up there the entire time. It was there a couple of years ago. Wargaming nerfed it. Wargaming buffed it again. It's back on top. I highly recommend getting the T-125. And the Concept 1B is kind of the premium version of it. A little bit less alpha damage. But those two are absolute top tier vehicles right there. The 57 Heavy. Well, it is better than the 50B. Uh, it's definitely... Like, I would probably put it, like, above the Kranwagen slightly. It's not, not deserving an S tier, but it is a little bit above this one. So... Yeah, but that's kind of the problem. Like, if you get to this level of vehicles, you have to start stacking within the tiers as well, um, in a way. Because five tiers isn't going to be enough to truly differentiate the performance level, even though they're absolutely razor thin and tiny. Remember that. Like, the difference between S tier and D tier is somewhere going to be, like, 10 to 15% of performance. The majority of performance comes from the player. So... The difference here between these vehicles is going to be very small, but even at the small differences, they are there. But they're very small. So at the end, remember, it's you that performs out of the vehicle. It's not the vehicle that does the performance for you. Unless it's the mouse, then it kind of just sits there and gets shot at. You'll live, you can do damage, you'll be perfectly fine. But mo the majority of the vehicles, you as the player, make the most impact remember that it's not most of the time in 80 percent of cases it's not the tank it's the player that wins the fight now t 95 v6 and again if you're as a player in your in a fight that you can't win like for example you're um in a badger against a leopard yeah you're fucked at that point but you can still use techniques and tricks to get yourself into an advantageous position to then still win that fight. And if you can't win it, try to get away from it and just try to run. If you can't run, you're screwed. Speaking of screwing, uh, that's what the T95V6 is very good at. It's very good at screwing with the mediums. Makes it hard to play. So not the ideal pick for the average players in terms of playability. We'll have to be down here. Um, but it does really well at just this heavy and play style. It's often sold cheap as well, so that's not even a, a point you can hold against it. That's a point you can hold against something like a Karo um, or an XM later. Um, but here, because remember, you still have to you have to pay for the performance. So like, if it doesn't, if it performs the same as a vehicle that's free, then what's the point of paying for it? But in that case, the T ninety five it performs really well. It's cheap, definitely belongs in A tier. And the TVP, uh, well, it used to be in. Pro player S tier. It got nerfed. So now it is nowhere. It's, it's quite a, a, a peg below the bat shot, I would put it. And uh, it's somewhere going to be in the average tier as well. Um, doesn't quite belong in there. Average it is. Then type 71. Well, what's what's the what's the point of the type 71 in, at any point when the T125 exists in its current form? The, it used to be a really good tank. Like it used to be somewhere up here. Uh, but now, there is absolutely no point in obtaining the vehicle. It is absolutely not going to be worth it. Vickers Light, yeah, honestly, yeah, it's it's just got nerfed to hell. You could put the T100 up here. You could put the Vickers down here. Um, but at the end, they're just not good vehicles, and they're not worth your time. Vickers 72, bit of a dilemma. It's going to perform similar-ish to the mouse, but it can't size scrape. It's got less armor. The only thing that is really good at is face hugging. It is easy to defeat. It does have the higher alpha damage. Yes, that's an advantage of it. But I would not put anything past the vehicle of being exceptional. Therefore, it goes into it's there. It's in the game. Tier. The VK90, obviously, it is gonna go all the way to the top. Not quite. No. I'm gonna put this in A tier. Can be worth purchasing. It is. If you're a good player. A better tank to play than the mouse, a better tank to play than the VK-72. It's more versatile, can play more roles. Um, see, the armor is a little bit lower on the VK-90, especially a lower front plate. 
uh, where, for example, the VK-72 wins out, but the VK-90 is better at side scraping. It can do that city playstyle. The turret on it, also pretty good. Just keep the thing wiggling. Again, if you keep a tank wiggling, you already make the armor a lot more effective. Even a leopard. You know, that's not going to make it much effective, but it's going to make it slightly more effective if you, if you wiggle your vehicle. But again, VK-72, it's there. It is very much present, just like the VZ-55, which, where's my I-7? Hello there, fellow brother. If it had the same two-shot autoloader as the M6O, it would go straight up here, but it doesn't, and it is quite generic. And you know where generic tanks go? They go right in the middle. There you go. 5A, yeah, pointless vehicle. Not worth spending any money on. The 113, a pretty good vehicle. It got adjusted unfavorably in a lot of ways, so it is, again, between A and B in a way. Um, for now, let's keep it up here. Um, I did put the uh, 777 into the B tier, so it's free. It does a lot of things the 777 does. A little bit better. Oh, I put it up one tier higher than the 777. Then the 113 GFT. And did I lie earlier when I said that the Badger is the only time show that belongs in S tier? No. It, it doesn't. Like, it's good. It's really good. It's A+. Plus. But I wouldn't put it all the way up there. Not quite. Not just quite. Almost belongs there, but not entirely. So there's that. Now that leaves us with four vehicles. Obviously, the Rhinoceronte had to add that in later. Uh, Rhinoceronte, honestly, A tier tank. No complaints. It's quite well balanced. It's nice to play. Could also be B tier. Not really that well enjoyable uh, for a beginner player, for a bad player. Uh, but I'm going to put it in A tier. It is a nice vehicle. Like, Wargaming did really well with the balancing of that vehicle. Um, Wargaming didn't do well as the balancing of the 1321, which is a bit pointless. So. Down there you go. Is there's not really like there is no point in these light tanks. Like there is no reason why you would get a Vickers or a WZ over something like a Batcher or a Leopard. There is no point. Right? Camel rating and blitz is one of the most relevant statistics. The maps are small, your ranges are very large. The camel rating isn't gonna really make a difference in the long run. At least not a significant enough difference to warrant it being higher. The one two one, well, that's going up here. Great alpha damage. The big thing it lacks is the gun depression. Really good alpha damage. The movement accuracy is absolutely terrible. But the accuracy is zoomed in. Very good. It's got turret armor. Hull armor is fine enough. Um, it, it definitely deserves being in the same place as the 62A and the E50M. Up there. It's also somewhat easy to play. Definitely belongs there. This is a bit of a problem. This is a bit of a problem, because in terms of, like, value, it goes here, right? Because it's, it's been in, in, in boxes, and any crate tank immediately loses any value it has uh, to the player, right? Because why would you pay? Like, this is not real life. This are uh, tanks. Like, you don't pay 50% more for 3% more performance. You don't do that, unless you're stupid. So with the XM, I'm just going to put it in average. And uh, see until it eventually comes into shop for actual, for an actual price. Right? This is not like a graphics card where you get actual real world more performance. It's a damn video game, right? If you pay twice as much for a tank that's three times as uh, much performance, like that's 3% more performance, you're going to pay twice as much, but you're not going to have twice as much as fun. And that's what actually matters. So anyway, now, as always... Thank you very much for watching, and tell me down in the comments why I'm wrong. See ya!